Thanks for joining us on Crime Watch. I'm Ivy Kano. We begin this episode with the one story that is trending the most in the country and has kept social media abuzz for days running. The hashtag NSAS campaign is not new, but its impact has never so reverberated until now. The movement, which is against police brutality, maltreatment, and extortion of innocent citizens by men of the Special Anti Robbery Squad, popularly known as SAS, was reignited following the alleged brutalization of an unarmed young man in Ugoli, Delta State. Now, Inspector General of Police Mohamed Adamu has restricted personnel of FSAS and other tactical squad from routine patrol. They are to respond only to cases of armed robbery, kidnapping, and other violent crimes. But Nigerians seemed far from satisfied. Another hashtag, NSAS, not ban SARS, has been launched demanding the outright scrubbing or holistic reform of the police. The Nigerian police force is ranked the most corrupt institution in the country and also first in the prevalence of bribery index with 33%. This is according to a survey by the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics in alliance with the United Nations Office on Drugs and Crime and the European Union. Answers now. The people were supposed to protect us, don't turn against us. So. Social media has been taken over by a surge of outcry on the activities of special anti robbery squad. Hashtags have been created to end the brutality of some of the officers of the special anti robbery squad. Some of their activities have even led to the loss of lives of promising youths. Angered by this, Thousands of youths have taken to social media to vent their anger for what they say is continuous harassment, intimidation and extortion by the officers' special anti robbery squad, special tactical squad, anti-cultism squad, anti-kidnapping squad and other tactical squads of the Nigerian police. Popular artists with large following have also lent their voice while some have spoken in defense of some of the few good officers, others are calling for protests. If you end this as you go scrap police, they maintain their orientation. Inside police, they are good policemen, good honorable policemen. Nobody say every police line bad. If you hand SARS war, police, they're not going to hand police. Police is still going to shoot. Or someone else with a gun is going to shoot. That's not what it is. You need to stop the shooting it's not about ending SARS because like to be honest there's a lot of SARS that actually done their work They're, not all police are bad people are dying you think your person will give you freedom no you have to demand for freedom John Floyd got killed some part of Nigeria came out to protest but our brothers are dying every day our brothers are getting shot every day our men are dying what are we doing we are trending hashtags but what could be responsible for the rot in this unit of the Nigerian police? A former commissioner of police in Lagos, Fatai Owusheni, and former director of Department of State Service, Dennis Amakri, say the special anti-robber squad was a child of necessity that started out well. The unit itself is not a bad unit. People that have encountered uh, them um that in, in their helpful manner where you have serious arm robbery cases and these fellows um, have come to their aid they are supposed to be a tactical a tactical squad that will handle serious crimes like arm robbery uh, kidnapping terrorism and stuff like that insurgency you know but uh, right now they are not even fighting things like insurgency but what could have gone wrong and what can be done to redeem the battered image of this department in the Nigerian police force? If you've not served up to a period or, or in the Nigeria police, a minimum of three years, you shouldn't be transferred to those units. And when you go to those special tactical units as well, when you serve um, your term um, after about three, four years, you're also supposed to be posted out. Nigerians... Of course, um, uh, without prejudice, the, the media people, you celebrate some of these um, 
fellows, you start calling them that they are the super policemen. What the authority needs to do is um, let people be accountable, let, take them into account for their dereliction of duty. If you have in the state that they keep on saying people that are wearing all sort of t-shirts are killing people, take the police commissioner into account. We still believe that there is a unit required to handle special crimes, you know, and we need the SARS or cancel the name, disband it or whatever, but there should be, call them anti-terrorism group or whatever, but there is a need in the police to have a specialized unit that will be handling uh, serious crimes, especially weaponized crimes. We are dealing with the symptoms instead of the root causes of what is happening. Because as far as I'm concerned, what they should do is to restructure the police. It's about time that the leadership of the police follow through with their plans of sanitizing the department before the tension generated by the actions of some deviant officers boils over into a full-blown crisis. With the reawakening of the hashtag NSAS campaign across the country, not a few reactions have come from a long list of prominent personalities, including government officials, celebrities, actors, and social media influencers. One of the leading voices in the hashtag NSAS campaign, Shegun Awosoya, popularly known as Sugar Link, believes the Special Anti Robbery Squad has outlived its relevance and requires holistic reform. SARS or tactical squads generally, the idea behind them is to engage some critical issues in the society. But if this body that have been designed to do this have been failing in their duties, bringing them in for maintenance, you are not reforming them. We, the, see, the error is gone. We are in the 21st century. We are no longer living under military rule. These people were created under military rule. Remember, under a military interrogation where anything goes. There's no human right under military rule. It's an illegitimate government. So, but this is a legitimate government under a democracy. You cannot continue to maintain that because you're of the fear of the unknown. Why can't we, in the 21st century, begin to be apprehensive of the future enough to plan for the future instead of just being there to say, oh, now I realize it is bad. Imagine now, the bill that they just brought, the protocol they just brought in now is a two-year-old protocol that is even crying for, for, for tweak. And now we're celebrating that. This was where we were two years ago, not where we are now. So why would you be using yesterday's uh, uh, solution to today's problem when we can actually think proactively and make the police functional so that they can be a part of something big? Police, the, one of the fundamental problems of police is uh, se uh, self-actualization. They want to be a part of something bigger than them. But they, 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 but they, are, they, are, they are helmed in this cocoon of these you know, reoccurring crimes. Organized crime syndicates to go, and, to go and chase an Okada man, to go and rob a, a young boy who is wearing tight jeans. Is that the reason why the police were created? Is that the reason why SARS were created? To check phones? To violate human rights? So please, people are dying. Even the children of the police officers themselves are not safe. I got a call one time from the, from the son of the AI, AIG who was accosted by these same people in Abuja. He was taken to the ATM machine and to, to withdraw money at gunpoint. He was beaten black and blue. He mentioned that he, he, was, he was the son of an AIG. They beat him more. Say, go and report to your daddy. Which is to tell you that this is not pockets of... We're not dealing with bad eggs, some bad eggs. No, please. We're dealing with a culture of impunity. Because you've been hearing this word, I would kill you, nothing will happen. It's not that they rehearsed it. It's not that it's a script. They say it all over the country. Which means it has become a culture, a way of life of these people. And until we engage it from that mindset, we're not going to change anything. So if the police are created to work by the law, with the law, to work based on the law, then the first thing you need to do is to fix the law that guides their operations. 
So you cannot be an, an, an enforcer of law and order and be breaking the law. Do you understand? So that is exactly the missing link. And because of the years and the vestiges of military interrogum, you know, it has actually affected our psyche. Let us repeal and replace the 1943 Act with a new act that refocuses the police, you know, and ensure that they, are, they work within the frames of accountability and transparency, uh, uphol upholding of uh, human rights, and also collaboration with the society in order for them to win trust. So once there is trust and the gap between the, 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 uh, the police and the public is being bridged, then there is going to be a proper understanding of how things work. You see, in, civ in civilized environments, you don't buy bigger guns to police your citizens. Rather, you invest in intelligence-led policing as a principle. With this principle, you will know that when I'm close to you enough, I will know more about you. I will know how, when you are going wrong. I will be able to investigate crime without firing a shot. So that's precisely what we're looking at. Not carrying AK-47 around in a country as if we're at war. So this is, this is where the problem has been. And because the people who <coughs> are operating in this conundrum are making a lot of money from extortion, from ransoms, from impunity, they don't have to, they don't see any reason why they have to be professional. The professional in the system, they feel relegated. Sometimes they get punished for being, doing the right thing because impunity has whole sway. So until we fix the law, for example, if we begin to say, let's put a protocol in place. If you change IG, you can change the protocol. And that was also what happened in 2017. SARS is an ad hoc program addressing a particular thing. The society is not the way it was 28 years ago. Why will you prioritize a 28 years old ad hoc program over a 90 year old institution? We should ask ourselves this critical question. Despite the fact that people are dying needlessly. So those are the questions we're asking. Now we have laws in this country that does not even give room for SARS to operate the way they are operating. And when I say SARS, I mean all the tactical scores because they are all the same, more or less, in their operations. We have the Administration of Criminal Justice Act of 2015. We have the Anti-Torture Act of 20, 2017. We have the Human Rights Proceedings where people can actually go and file, but we have not even been able to see one single officer who has been arrested and jailed for violating human rights. So this is precisely what we're saying. We can do this. We can fix this country. And solving police problem is like solving half of the problem of, the Nigeria, of Nigeria. Now when we come back, we'll tell you 10 things you need to know about the new rules guiding the operations of the Federal Special Anti-Robbery Squad. Welcome back. While the public backlash continues, the police are also doing some damage control to ensure their officers and men limit themselves to their primary objectives of protecting lives and property. Federal SAS and other tactical squads have been banned from routine patrol across the country. They are also banned from engaging in stop and search, mounting of roadblocks and traffic checks with immediate effect. The personnel are also banned from embarking on patrols or tactical assignments in Mufti. The must always appear on their police uniforms or approved tactical gear while on official assignments. The IGP also stopped the tactical squads from invading the privacy of citizens, particularly through indiscriminate and unauthorized search of mobile phones, laptops, and other smart devices. The personnel are also to concentrate and respond only to cases of armed robbery, kidnapping, and other violent crimes where the need arises. The air squad and the monitoring units are to monitor and arrest errant federal SAS personnel and other police officers on the road. <music> Commissioners of Police in charge of federal SAS, state commands and other supervisory zonal assistant inspectors general of police are to be held liable for any misconduct within their area of responsibility. AIGs and CPs are to ensure an effective supervision of personnel of federal SARS and others within their jurisdiction.
Now on away from the hashtag NSAS campaign, the life of a 28-year-old Nigerian, Ubina Ezeoko, hangs in the balance after being convicted for murder by the court in the United Kingdom. Here in Nigeria, his father, Chiedozie Ezeoko, is crying for help over what he calls a wrongful conviction by the British court after spending four years behind bars. Obina Ezioke was 24 years old when he was arrested in the United Kingdom in 2016. But his father, Chiedozie Ezioke, is hanging on to hope that one day his son would be set free. He was charged with double homicide for the murder of a woman and her nephew sometime in September 2015. After four courts were unable to convict him, a fifth eventually found him guilty. His father laments the failure of the British court to prove its case beyond reasonable doubt. My son's own, they were not able to prove that because they could not account for, they could not show the weapon that was used for, this, for, 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 the, for these murders. They were unable to put my son at the scene of the murder. And that was why the prosecution and the police now decided that the only way out was to make sure that the jury convict is to intimidate and coerce the jury. After an unprecedented, to me like this, what is now, what, what, what UK, UK government, I don't know how they are going to defend this. I don't, I don't, I don't know how they are going to do it. That one, two, three, four juries could not agree to convict this my man. And with no new evidence introduced, a fifth one did. Does that make sense? Obina is due for sentencing by the British court on the 1st of October 2020. His 58-year-old father makes a desperate appeal to the authorities in Nigeria to intervene. Uh, I wrote, I wrote to, the, uh, to the Attorney General and to the Diaspora Commission uh, to, to intervene. But the way the systems are, if, there's, if you do not have anybody pushing things for you, it becomes more difficult. But um, I believe that as your establishment is kind enough to give me a, this platform, I believe they will hear. And I believe that they will do something. My son will be sentenced on the 1st of uh, October. And I hope that uh, they will be able to do something before then. For Chie Dozie Ezioke and his family, every second counts in the search for justice. Now some reprieve has finally come the way of parents of baby Kola Wole Gold, who was abducted at the Sotito Bire Church in Akure last year. The founder of the church, Baba Tunde Alpha, and five others have now been sentenced to life imprisonment over the disappearance of the toddler. Justice Olushegun Udushola of the Ondo State High Court convicted the defendants after finding them guilty of the two count charge of kidnapping as well as aiding and abetting to kidnap based on evidence presented by the prosecution. He also condemned in strong terms the complicity and lackadaisical attitude of the police after the boy was reported missing an act that led to the burning of the church. After over 10 months of litigation, the judgment day has come. The suspects took trial over the disappearance of a year-old boy, Gold Kolawole, in November last year in a church known as Sotitobre Prison Chapel, operated by Babatude Alpha. The issue culminated into the burning of his church, though the body of the missing boy was not found in his charge. In his judgment, which lasted for four hours, the trial judge, 
Justice Odushola convicted the prophet and five members of his church, having found them guilty of the two can charge of kidnapping and aiding and abetting to kidnap based on the circumstantial evidence presented by the prosecution. The court also condemned in strong terms what it termed complicity, compromise and lackadaisical attitude of the Ndo State Police Command after Gould got missing, which also led to the burning of Soti to be charge. But counsel to the convicted prophet said the judgment was challenged. The judgment has been delivered. The judgment is either against or for. And whoever the judgment is against has a right of appeal. Uh, the fact that a judgment is against the defendant today does not mean they can't exercise their right of appeal. We will consult with them and take the necessary steps. And count one, the six of them were sentenced to seven years imprisonment without labor. And count two, they were sentenced to life imprisonment without an option of appeal. Then the seventh defendant, because they said we have not uh, proved beyond reasonable doubt the offense of uh, destroying property or evidence, is a uh, discharge and acquittal. Android. One of the seized church members was however discharged and acquitted because there was no evidence directly linking him to the crime. Keep your financial transactions confidential. Kidnappers are known to take people forcefully and demand a ransom. They often target persons with access to large sums of money. Don't reveal your financial history to anyone. Vital information, like your bank statement of account, should not be handled carelessly. Avoid discussing money matters on phone, especially in public. Avoid driving high-value cars at night. Background checks. Carefully select persons you may seek to hire, including artisans, domestic staff, drivers, and anyone who must have access to your itinerary. And that's our program today. Thanks for watching. You can send in eyewitness pictures and videos to our email address and social media handles. It's coming up on your screen now. And I'm Ivy Kano. I'll be back next time.